Hello, everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Homeopathy Super Sessions by Dr. Jambos. Today, I'll bring the part three of H.A. Roberts, chapter number 35. So, Dorpat says the next example is of the popular sulfur anilamides. So, previously, we have seen the part two of our aspirin. Now, in this part three, is giving an example of sulfur anilamides. They are one of the best instances of the powers and dangers of synthetic drugs. So, Robert says that the sulfur anilamides are one of the best examples of the dangers of the synthetic drugs because it was a very powerful drug. They had been hailed for the powerful action in infections of all kinds. So, for any infection or other infection of all kinds, this popular drug of sulfur anilamides was very useful. It is true that in the laboratory and clinic, they have proven this power. So, it was very true that whatever research they done in the labs, as well as in the clinical practice, it had proven, it, it, had, it had been proved that this drug is a very powerful in action to treat any and all kinds of infections. But along with the proven powers of destroying immune organisms, they are dangerous to the normal cell balance. He further says that, no doubt, sulfanilamides are very powerful in destroying the invading organism, but at what cost? At the cost of the of, of damage to the normal cell balance. So even normal cells have been affected by the drug. Therefore, the careful therapists will not use these agents without keeping careful laboratory checks on the bloodstream and other functions of the patient. So whenever a therapist will use this drug, they will definitely monitor the bloodstream and the different functions of the patient. So they may monitor the kidney function, the liver function, and so on and so forth to see if they have been affected by this sulfur anilamide drug because they are dangerous to the normal cell balance. More variations of this group of drugs have been developed as compared to the other drugs and has become very popular too. So more vari variations of the sulfur anilamide drug was there and it had become very popular. When sulfur anilamides was first publicly recognized and marketed, it was permitted to fall in the hands of laymen. So initially, when this new drug came, even the laymen could also use the drug. The laymen thought that they could cure themselves of all the ailments with this wonderful remedy of, of all the disease. So the laymen thought that this was the only drug which could treat n number of ailments or rather all the ailments which mankind suffered from. As a result of this constant use, many deaths resulted. So it was a widespread, I mean, the layman people were there. Many people used, it, used this drug probably without any scientific uh, prescription or indications, as a result of which what happened? The death resulted because it also affected the normal functioning of the normal cell. Thus, the manufacturer of the product were obliged to keep a closer watch on the production and distribution of the drug. So therefore, naturally, if this happened, so the manufacturers were also uh, quite taken aback. And so they, tightened their, so they tightened their manufacturing processes in which the production and the distribution of the drugs were limited, or they used to keep a close watch on who's taking the drugs so that they could have a hold on the drug. Thus, the research chemists set about developing less dangerous combinations. So what happened? The, the researchers in the lab, they went on uh, developing different combinations which were less dangerous to the existing one. It became an irrevocable fact that the medicinal agents which were used to eradicate the, organ the organisms other than by similar to the dynamic force, it would pose a threat to the patient. So it became an truth or an irrevocable fact that whenever you give this remedy, you have to stimulate the dynamic force. If you suppress it, it will cause a threat to the patient's life. It is no doubt true that sulfanilamides and its variations have a comparatively good record in such conditions as pneumonia and like infections. So they found out that this drug had a good record in pneumonia and other like infections. That is a good record compared to that of the dominant school where pneumonia is a dangerous and often fatal disease. So if you compare it to the dominant school, they said that pneumonia was a fatal and dangerous disease, but with the use of this drug, sulfanilamide, the, the, the fatality was reduced. So therefore, Robert has written 
this is a good record compared to that of the dominant school for pneumonia is dangerous and often fatal disease. It has to be used promptly in the onset of the infection of whatever kind or they are useless. So Robert says that this remedy has to be used only during the onset of the infection. But if you give it later on, they become useless. So he says, let us analyze the situation. Here we are given a therapeutic agent that will kill the invading or organism with a corresponding dangerous action against the normal function of the body. So again, he repeats the same thing, saying that the sulfur analamides are very powerful. They will kill the invading or they will kill the invading organism, but also they will attack the normal functions of the body or they will attack the normal cells of the body. Sadly, it's of no value against the invading organism after it has become established. So if an infection has become established or the invading organism is there and it has become established and then you give it, then it is of totally no use. He has said repeatedly that you have to give it in the beginning of the disease. Are we to believe that its danger to the normal cells of the patient has diminished in proportion to its possibilities of help against the invader? But the use of this drug, the bloodstream becomes sterilized of the invading organism, yet death results. So by the use of sulfur anilamide, what happens? The infective organism becomes sterilized or they become, or they are destroyed, but yet death will result. This is true where the danger may be intermittent or retarded in relation to the amount of food dosage or the frequency of its administration. So this was true, why? Because probable the amount of food drug was too much or it was repeatedly much more frequent. Careful observers in both schools of medicine have noted the slow return to normal health of patients. Cured. So careful observers in both schools of medicine have noted the slow return to normal health of patients and they termed it as cure. That is in acute infections having been overcome by heroic methods. Or we may better say by application of the forces outside the normal functionings of the body. So in an, in an acute infection, we are giving an internal drug, the sulfur anilamide drug, that is a force uh, which is outside the normal function of the body. So what are we doing basically? We are not stimulating our defense mechanism to overcome the infection, but we are using an artificial or a, or a synthetic drug to overcome the infection. Therefore, although the inbred organism has been limited in action, the system has to overcome its effects of the infection plus toxic, toxic effects of the So he says that no doubt, whatever drug was used, its action could be limited and the body has to overcome the dangerous effects or the toxic effects of these drugs also in addition to the invading organism. Now let us consider the sulfur and amide relation to the homeopathic principle. So Robert says now let us see if we can see the sulfur and anilamides in the light of homeopathic principles. All our drugs in homeopathy are proved on healthy human beings. Such an attempt was made in a case of sulfur anilamides, notably by Alan B. Sutherland. So Alan B. Sutherland, he was a doctor who started proving the drug on healthy human beings, that is sulfur anilamide. The result of this fragmentary proving were published in the homeopathic recorder in the in September 1940. Dr. Sutherland's conclusion was that the substance potentized has great possibilities as a homeopathic remedy. So he said if you potentize sulfur analamide according to homeopathic principles, this substance had a great potential in treating the disease. He had more clearly demonstrated its field of usefulness by sure guidance of symptomatic outlines that are principles demand. So he says that if you want to be successful in practice, this drug sulfanilamides, which was made or just potentized, you had to find out the symptom similarity and then give it. Therefore, it says that the usefulness would be a sure guide of the symptomatic outlines that are principles demand. That means what? You have to go on the symptom similarity. These are the only guides which prove safety in cure rather than uncertain palliation of a condition. So if we would use the symptom similarity uh, law, then only you would be uh, successful in practice. And if you do not use this, then you will only cause palliation. The patient later had to overcome to, through his natural vitality or else succumb to a most, to in some other and more deeply conscious form of, of a later date. So, so he says the patient later had to overcome 
through his natural vitality. That means what the patient's natural the patient's natural vitality was there. If given on the law of similars, that would be activated and the cure would take place. Or if we used as a palliative or if not used on the law of similars, only used on one or two symptoms or a small group of symptoms, then what would, then what would happen? It would succumb in some other and more deeply constituted form at a later date. That means what? Its side effects would be there, which would cause a constitutional defect or a constitutional state would be there. In homeopathy, we try to cure the patient rather than the disease. As you all know, in homeopathy, we treat the man and not the disease. It, it might be well supplemented by the statement that we do not presume to snatch the patient from an acute illness. So you can, you can supplement the statement by saying that we do not snatch the patient from an acute illness, from which by the grace of his dynamic energies, he may well recover. Acute illness always being self-limiting. So an acute illness is there, it's always self-limiting, and if the immunity is good, the patient will recover. To impose upon him a constant condition plus the imposed drug illness from which he may never recover. So, if in an acute condition, if you use the sulfur and analamides based on your on one or two symptoms, you will create a drug illness from which he may never recover. The result of the homeopathic remedies in such infections as pneumonia, right, streptococcus, staphylococcus, and other generalized or local infections have been more remarkably than in any other system of medication. So he says that the results of homeopathic remedies in infections, as mentioned above here, they, have, they are more useful when you treat them on symptom similarity. This is a simple way of saying that the natural laws upon which homeopathy is founded and upon which our principles are based, they work as surely in serious swift pain disease as in any other condition. So if you have, if you have a proper application of the natural laws, and the principles on which our, 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 our home system is based on, then even in a serious condition, which is often fast-paced, the work will be done. It is true that in some of these conditions, the system is more deeply involved and death more imminent than in many conditions which we call upon to treat. So no doubt he says that we are, if we are called to treat an emergency or a condition in which the vital organs are more involved, then death would ensure. It is also true that many of the serious infections which were cured before the labs were at hand to furnish accurate diagnosis. So Dr. Robert says that if you use the homeopathic principles and you give a drug, the serious infections could be cured even before the labs were there to diagnose the condition. Very often the most common result of a lab diagnosis is to weaken the courage of the physician, the patient and the families and the patient's families. He also furthermore says that whatever lab investigations we do or the lab diagnosis is to do, whatever result you get in hand, that only weakens the courage of the physician, the patient and the patient's family. That means what if the lab reports are not good, quite, po quite possible, whatever zeal, enthusiasm the physician has in treating the patient that will go down. Even the patient will get sad or depressed same, same thing, the patient's family also will be sad, depressed, or anxious. The homeopathic physician recognizes another important principle in the serious states. The more acute the case, the more infection strikes at the life of the patient, the more clearly indicative are the symptoms. As you all know, in acute disease, onset is sudden, it lasts for some time, either there is death or recovery. So therefore, he says, Robert says, the homeopathic physician recognizes another important principle in serious states that more acute the state, more acute the case, more the infection strikes at the life of the patient. So the infection will be there, symptoms will be precarious in nature and more clearly indicative of the symptoms. Obscuration of symptoms, unless produced by crude drugging, is a very rare in case of acute infection. So whatever person, so if you use the drug on homeopathy principles, the obscuration of symptoms or the symptoms will not be obscured until you use a crude drug, which is often very rare in case of an acute infection. The homeopathic remedy works regardless of the name of the disease and works moreover towards a true and complete cure without sequelae or constitutional involvement. So whatever homeopathic remedy you give upon this to symptom similarity, it will work regardless of the name of the diagnosis of the disease because we take into symptoms the totality of the symptoms and works moreover towards a true and complete cure. 
And naturally, in cases which are curable, it will go towards cure or a true and complete cure without any sequelae or concentrational involvement. Concentrational involvement meaning what? The side effects of the drugs. So in homeopathy, we potentize the drugs, we use it. There are no side effects provided. We use it correctly. So that's all in this chapter, or rather in this part. The part four will be coming up soon. Thank you so much.